The boys are back in town. What's up, guys? Joe. What's up, what's up, Jeff? How you doing today, sir? Allergies. I'm here, though. I'll right, fight through it. It's that time fight. of year. Yeah. Boys are back in town. It's been like that six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Slugging it out. Man, it's been tough. Yeah, man. It's, oof. Mm. This is tough. Weezy, give me your song of the week, brother. Oh, man. I will listen to Stay Scheming this week. I bet okay. you would. Yeah. <laughs> Stay Scheming. Yeah. Drake, French. It bothers me when the guys Ricky. get to acting like the bra. Yeah, they do. They do. It bothers me. They do. They definitely have the goofies with a check, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> my song of the week is French Montana. We were just listening to the Splash Brothers. Great verse by yeah. Draco. Yeah. The, the original oh, verse. The Lost Five. The Lost Five. The Lost Five. Yes, yeah, Lord. That's a good song. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. What you got, Jeff? Man, RIP to the legend, Rico. Uh, Rico Wade. Mm -hmm. Outcast, Southern Player, Listed. Cadillac, Funky Music. Oh. My favorite Outcast song. Yeah, yeah, it's a great song. I got out of there not too soon, not too long after that on Outcast. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you go too soon? I don't know. Maybe the sec AT Aliens. I probably listen to AT Aliens. I'm not the biggest Outcast fan. Though. I will. I will be honest about that. That's crazy that you yeah. are a huge Scarface fan. Yeah. But you're not an Outcast fan. It's crazy. I love UGK though. Yeah. I love UGK. Yeah. Love Ghetto Boys. Yeah. Not that big with Ball. So it's more Houston. Yeah, I respect Ball and G. Ball and G? But they, they down they down on the list to me. Ball and G? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Like if it's duos, Ball and G like fifth. Okay. Okay. Huh? Fifth? UGK. <laughs> Outcast. Clips. What a lock set. That's three. Duos. Clips. Mob Deep. Mob Deep. A Ball and G? Mob Deep ain't no mind at all. Clips number one on my list. Clips is, Clips is up there. Clips number one on my Clips list. Clips are up there. Clips number one on my list. Yeah. All right, let's get to it, camera. Man. <laughs> Sport press. Yeah. No layup line, no warm ups, no nothing. We just walking right into the stadium and get into the game. Let's do it. When the beat on, then it's on. When our right jerseys on the road, cause how we feel where we roam is our home. Leaving these other podcasts null and void. The show can't miss something like Tom Shepard and Corduroy's. Full sport press, you know them boys. Jay run the point, lock for three, and me, I crashed the boys. Weezy told you that it's paid for. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. I would like to welcome everybody back. And some of you for the first time to the full sport press podcast, the premier sports podcast for the consummate sports fan. And this is your one stop shop for all sports, lady news and topics. I'm Jay Hope. It's your boy, Big Jeff. It's your boy, Weezy. What it do? Cameraman, how you doing, brother? Solid, huh? Just here. Yeah, we're here, though. Long way. Right? Yeah, yeah, got to. Got to. I know that feeling. Episode 513, we're unveiling our 2024 NFL mock draft. FSP style. Always FSP style. You better damn know it. Better damn believe it. Let's kick it off. We easy. Best of the week. Talk to the people. Uh, best of the week for me, man, is draft week. Football mm -hmm. officially starts, man. Party at your house for the draft. I'm doing a little something. No, you're not. It's it's the hell I ain't. The hell I ain't. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Doing a little something. The hell I ain't. You ain't going to do nothing. The hell yeah. I ain't. Cool. Oh. <laughs> Dude, crazy. My best of the week is WNBA Twitter, guys. Yeah. People. We're joking about becoming uh, basketball husbands. That was a good time. WBA players start making for real money. Yeah. Some of the girls were being good sports about it, saying, making more money. We're already doing that now. Yeah. yeah. Some of them make yeah. 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 Some, they was making some good sports yeah. about it, like you yeah. said. Yeah. Being a yeah. good sport about it. Some of the dudes are going to be a little too horny. Yeah. <laughs> a little too horny. Yeah. Antonio Brown. <laughs> Yeah, it's on the front. He got blocked. <laughs> Picture with Ace and Rocky like this. <laughs> Ace Wilson, That's fun. That's hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. What you got, Jeff? Best of the week? Oh, man, I got to talk sports and the impact. Of, speaking of WNBA, I got to talk sports and the impact of women in sports with the good people at the Scenario Radio Shout Show. Out to yeah. The guys. yeah, man, got to talk about that. The episodes are all both. Well, the episodes are out now. Okay, so yeah, well, I got to talk about Shout that. Shout out man. to that, man. That's yeah. fire. I got to listen to it. Send me a link. I got you. Big Say this. Yeah, right back to you. Worst of the week, Jeff. Oh man, you know, I, we did a show here. We were talking about off season coaches, coaching carousel. And we we're talking about the off season. Now I was saying that Atlanta Hawks is the Atlanta Falcons, pardon me, is the best job available. And Bill Belichick is gonna get that job. And somehow Bill Belichick didn't get that job. No, he did. And it turns out, and found out why this week Bill Belichick didn't get that job. <laughs> oh, Bobby it. Kraft was sneaking behind his back saying he sure. wasn't he wasn't trustworthy. Yeah. 
it makes sense now because there's well, no way the Falcons mm-hmm. was not gonna hire yeah. Bill Belichick. It, it seemed funny, man, because too many people interviewed for that job. Sneak this, yeah. Bobby Crabb. What what Jesus say about sneak this? <laughs> He's get jammed up. Don't mention my name. No, no, no. Sneak this thing. Oh, I'll never forget your ass. Yes. Hey, you're right about that. You're right about that. Jesus didn't say that. Yeah. And Bobby Crabb was definitely sneak this. Bobby, yeah, Bobby. I, he been around too many rappers. Yeah. Yeah, Bobby got enough yeah. money, though. Bobby, 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 Bobby uh, he be a male. Bobby be a male. He got enough money. <laughs> Bobby locked in. Yeah, he's he he straight. Yeah. He's super straight. <laughs> my worst of the week is WNBA shoe talk, guys. Oh, man. People are so upset that Kaylin Clark is about to get another signature shoe. Besides Sabrina Inescu and Brianna Stewart, who left Nike to go to Puma to get her signature sneaker. Yeah. Man, people are very upset that Asia Wilson hasn't gotten a signature sneaker. Now, she's had player edition shoes yes. dropped. So has Skylar Diggins. Yep. So has um, plays for the Dallas uh, Wings. Uh, went to Notre Dame. God, man, come on, man. P. I didn't know she had a P.E. She had a P.E. Okay. She had a P.E. with the... Uh, um, Agoma Cat? No, it's, but it's, yeah, it's, um, she was 24. Yeah, her number 24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, she's African. Uh, that's her name. Oh, God. Um, her brother, Ogaba Wale. Yeah. Her brother plays yeah. for the Texans. He's running back, yeah. Um, but they're upset because Asia doesn't have one. And here's the thing, guys most players just don't sell shoes. You're two time MVP. The, Jeff loves Nikola Jokic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, Never Good, had a P.E. Yeah. And he's signed with 361 Degrees right now. Nobody knows that. <laughs> Look at yeah, Joel and B, your one-time MVP. Bro, he, your, he's wearing Skechers. Now he's with Skechers. He's wearing Skechers. He dropped a one shoe on Under Armour. It did not. It wore that shoe for five years. It wore for five years, dude. <laughs> only, did, only person did was Shaq. Shaq sold, Shaq sold two sneakers. Barkley sold some shoes. Shaq sold two sneakers, maybe three. Yeah, but you look at it. It's, it's easy to go out and emulate what Caitlin Clark does. Because yeah. you're a little closer to height Steph, to Kaylin Cole. Steph effect. It's a Steph effect. I dude. Yeah, him. yeah. It's one of those things. And I think people aren't really looking at the fact that people aren't saying it's because you're black. No, it's a really it's a post player thing. It's hard to sell big men's shoes. It's that, but it was just the fact there's only three players in the dub in the W that have signature sneakers mm-hmm. and it looked weird when you saw the three players. Well, give me a give me a guard that deserves a signature sneaker. Maya Moore. Did prison break instead, dog. He should have got let, that. He let the hood down. Yeah. Maya Moore, we were robbed. Robbed. we were robbed yeah. of what Maya Moore was going to do. I'm hot at Maya Moore. I, I got, <laughs> if I see her, I got to holler her. <laughs> nah, leave her alone. Leave her alone. Leave her nah, alone. I got to leave her alone, but I'm still out. Yeah. Man, they was dead. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. What Bobby Smart is saying? <laughs> <laughs> but back to what I was saying, Zion, <laughs> he didn't say, bro, he said, them shoes ain't selling. Them shoes bad. Ain't selling. Let's be real. All three, all three signatures. Nah, you damn lie. Lucas selling and JT. They selling. all are bad. Shoes, no, but though. no, those Tatum's yeah. fire. People are in those Tatum. Those Tatum's are bad. Nah, them Tatum's. I'm gonna tell you what they better than what Zion. Yeah, the Zion's are the worst of the three, but they're all bad. All three are bad. That's all I saw. I, I, I told you them Anthony Edwards is fire though. Anthony hey, them up right now. I told you. Be real, them I up right you. now. Them know how the shoes are right I told now. You. I, did I what not? You, did I not call you, that? What you got, Wiz? Exactly. Okay. Oh man. So the my worst of the week, man. I seen a cicada. You saw a cicada already? Dude. What the hell? You got in the hot tub time machine, dude. No, no, no. Well, my job and somebody from another from another state and it traveled from their car. And I seen it on the ground. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Cicadas are this damn big, dude. Cicadas are huge. Nah, that wasn't no cicada. Hey. <laughs> cicadas are, hey, if this cicada was it's a, I'm in the house. You gotta be. This cat is a huge, dude. I ain't outside. Nah, That's all I'm with for that. I'm gonna play around. This, this is gonna be the worst it's ever been with this cat. Don't worry about it. Right these now. next four weeks. No way. Burn out on it's BTU. It's gonna be rough the next four weeks. Especially if it doesn't rain. It's gonna be rough. Burn out on BTU. When it start? Uh, a couple weeks, I think. It's, it's, uh, I think I Zoom link! <laughs> 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 Make sure you check us out on iTunes, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon Music to catch up on the full archive of past episodes of FSP. Just simply search Full Sport Press Podcast. J Ho, yes, sir. And Weezy. What it do? Do you guys have a, pardon me, Yellow Box of Cheerios recipient for our listeners? We do. This week's award recipient is Mo Hassan from Vanderbilt. Yep. Okay. Yep. Vanderbilt quarterback. Former Vanderbilt quarterback Mo Hassan had 17 career pass attempts and never made a start. But the former Vanderbilt quarterback said the Italian mob knew about him 
well enough to offer $300,000 to fix college games when he was with the Commodores. I signed a backup quarterback at Vandy in 2018 and 2019, made the wild claim on the episode of the Momentum Podcast, which he hosts, said that he was at Jason Aldean's kitchen, rooftop bar on Broadway, in Nashville when he was approached by a mobster who said that other SEC players had been offered $250,000 to $300,000 to fix games. Hassan said Alabama was one of the schools involved. Played at Vanderbilt for two seasons in 2018-2019 after playing at Syracuse and Coffeyville Community College in Kansas. He appeared in seven games and went 11 for 17 for 158 yards Mm -hmm. and a touchdown before transferring to Southern Cal. He was with the Trojans from 2022 to 2023, but not see any action due to injuries. Spoke person for Vanderbilt football. Declined to comment on Hassan's accusations. Also, an SEC spokesperson did not respond to a request for a comment as well. Mm-hmm. Mo, now listen, Mo. You don't do that after the fact, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whistleblower, man. Hey, dip it. Come on, oh, man. Well, I'm going to tell you what happened to that. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. It's got legs to it. It's got legs to it because <laughs> we got legs. But at the same time. His money didn't went dry. Money went dry. <laughs> His money didn't went dry. And he's singing, but he's singing to the wrong people. <laughs> Mess with that. If, if, it, if it was the mob, yeah. he's singing to the wrong people, dog. Yeah. Cause they gonna come back. Yeah, they definitely come back. They gonna come back. Yeah. So trying trying to get the momentum. Tread lightly. Right, tread lightly. Trying to get the momentum podcast views up. Yeah, tread lightly. Frog up that wrong tree, big dog. Yeah. True. <laughs> true. Will fall on you. Yeah. 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 Fall on yeah. you. Cause if it is true. They ain't got enough money to pay. Now. They'll never, they'll never hit the word of it. They got yeah. enough. Yeah, it'll, it'll shut them up, and they never hit the word of it. That's tough. That's real tough. Shout out to Mo. We gonna get that to you. Yeah. You got that. Yeah, you yeah. take that to you, man. That's your quarterback. Yeah. That gambling stuff is gonna get spooky, man. They finna mess the no game up. Oh man, we just got it's it. already here. We got the interpreter taking the fall for everything. We got a brother that's banging. <laughs> we got a brother that's foul, man. <laughs> yeah, you guys ready to get started with the first half? Let's do it. Let's get it. It's your boy FSP Weezy. Join us each and every Monday on all streaming platforms. And don't forget, everything is paid for. The Revolution will be podcasted. First half, the hottest sports news of the past week. Like we do each and every week here at the Full Sport Press Podcast. Before we get started, I am Jay ho It's your boy Big Jeff. It's your boy Weezy. What it do? Big Jeff, we're going to find you on social media, my brother. I'm Jay Easley, 84, across all social media platforms. Coach like Alan Assignment. Jay. Sir. What can they find? Jay Hove on Instagram and Twitter. Jeff, they trying to charge us on Twitter. It's tough. It's yeah. tough. New users. Yeah. But it's going to get done. It's coming. What we yeah. doing? Threads? Yeah, threading it up, baby. Yeah. Yeah, I'm already, you know, we got to build a fan base over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm FSPs. I'm FSPs. Yeah, FSPs. I'm going to get changed that. I'm FSP underscore Weezy. On IG, I'm at Howie's on Twitter. I'll let you. I'll let you. I'll let you. All right, let's kick the first half off and the entire first half off with some <laughs> NBA talk after six months, man. Six month grind. The NBA postseason is finally in the front view mirror this weekend. We'll see 16 teams begin their hopeful two month quest for the glorious Larry O'Brien trophy. There's a lot to unpack in that mission ahead of what we should be as far as one of, in the last couple of years, a thrilling postseason. Here's how the staff at FSP sees the 2024 NBA playoffs shaking out in the first round. We'll kick things off the Western Conference. Oklahoma City, number one seed versus who I think should be Sacramento, but could be the New Orleans Pelicans at the A seed. Regular season series was 2-2. Two two. Odds of Thunder are minus 250 to win the series. Jeff, winner, how many games, why? Oklahoma City Thunder is hoping – that is Sacramento. They match up better against Sacramento. You, it, depending on Zion. If Zion's out, they're hoping in Sacramento. Yeah. He's out. He's out for this. He's not out for the first round. Out for the first round. Yeah. yeah. So here's the thing. We're just going to assume that it's Sacramento. Oklahoma City wins this in six games. Okay. We. Yeah, it depends on who it is, but it, I, I think okay. So you get past the first round for sure. Either team. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I have them playing the Sacramento Kings and I have OKC 
winning in five. This is their first return to the postseason in Oklahoma City since the 2018-2019 season. Thing is, you don't have Kevin Warder. You don't have Malik Monk on that matchup. So the only thing you really got to worry about is De'Aaron Fox and Demonis Sabonis in that pick and roll. Now they have Keon Ellis playing at a high level. Also Keegan Murray as well. So um, I think it's a better matchup for OKC, especially get your C legs under you mm -hmm. to play an injured team. Either way, you're going to play an injured team. I got OKC in five, whoever they play. Yes, sir. All right. Moving on to the 4-5 seat, we have the Los Angeles Clippers versus the Dallas Mavericks. The regular season series, the Clippers won 2-1 to one odds. The Mavericks are 118 to win the series, minus 118. Winner, how many games, we? I I got the Clippers in this one winning this one. This this the old fashioned. The, here's the thing. Here's the question: Does defense still win championships? If defense still win championships, the Clippers can win this series. They got who the, they got playing D? Is it PG? Kawhi. Kawhi. Knee swollen. Kawhi tough. Gotta play. It's tough. Oh, uh, but you know, because Dallas is gonna score the points. They're gonna do their thing. But yeah. If somebody can. Can hold Luca from missing a couple shots and, and hold, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is tough, mm -hmm. and hold Kyrie from missing a couple shots. I think they win the game. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the best first round series on the on the books. This is must see TV. This is seven games of great basketball. I cannot wait. This is the Clippers in seven, but this is going to be the best series. High scoring, lot of lot of animosity. Russ is going to get a couple of ticks. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dallas is one of the hottest teams in the NBA. They ran off a 16-2 record in the regular season. Jeff talked about at halftime for a couple of weeks straight. Through 18 career games, though, against the Clippers, Luka Doncic is averaging his highest number of points per game, eight rebounds and seven assists. The only team that he kills more is the Detroit Pistons. Well. So <laughs> <laughs> there's just too many questions surrounding the Los Angeles Clippers. How injured is Kawhi Leonard? We don't know. Which version of uh, James Harden will we see? We don't know. But the Mavs are legit and quietly the team nobody wants to play. I got the Mavs in six. It's going to be fun, man. Really good matchup. Really good matchup. Moving on to the next matchup, we have the number three seed, Minnesota Timberwolves versus number six seed, Phoenix Suns. The regular season series, the Suns won by double digits every time. 3-0. Odds. The Suns are favorite. Minus 115. Jeff. Winner. How many games? Why? We talked about this halftime and in pre-production a lot. Phoenix just had to get to the playoffs. That's it. Um, Phoenix and six. You like that? Phoenix and six. Mm -hmm. This is this is the matchup Minnesota didn't want. Mm -hmm. To me, this is the matchup Minnesota didn't want just because how Phoenix lines up against them. Mm -hmm. To me, I can see there's a world where I can see Phoenix pu Phoenix pulling this game series out of six games. Dig it. You got with. I've already bet the Phoenix Suns in game one. Mm. But here's, here's the thing. Rudy Gobert is the sketch in this in, in this series. Really? Yeah, just because of defense. Because I because I, I know Phoenix can match them offensively. Mm -hmm. I know they're gonna score with them. Yeah. So that's why if, if they get it's, well from a game's perspective, if they're getting points, I'm taking I'm taking Phoenix. Okay. But even if you put if you put whoever whoever team that Rudy Gobert played for, they're gonna win this series. Cause if he goes out there just does what he's supposed to do mm -hmm. defensively, it's gonna scare the other team. Hmm. So I, I, it's gonna go I bet I seven game series, let's say Phoenix and seven. Okay. But you trade for Rudy Gobert, kind of like what Weezy said, to get stops. And after an up and down first year, we talked about this last week. That's exactly what he did for the Timberwolves this year. The Suns though have the experience edge. They have three players you can throw a ball to. They're going to go get a bucket, go down here, whatever you want to do. Minnesota has one that you can throw the ball to and go get a bucket. Cat needs, you know, pick and roll situation. He needs more to get his points. Bradley Beal is the X factor. If he plays at the high level he's been playing within the last two to three weeks, plain and simple, this team is going to be dangerous going past the Minnesota Timberwolves. And I just don't think that there's a way that you can stop KD, Book, and Beal. Um, I have the Suns in six. Tough matchup. That's a tough one, man. Tough one for Minnesota. And the last matchup in the Western Conference, we have the number two seed, Denver Nuggets, versus the number seven seed, Los Angeles Lakers. The regular season series, the Nuggets won 3-0. Denver's favorite, minus 420 in this <laughs> matchup. <laughs> wow. Wheezy, give me your winner. How many games and why? 
I think it's going to be a six game series. Mm-hmm. I want to say LeBron's so bad. I'm going to go ahead and say the Lakers in six. Lakers in six? Yeah, and here's and here's my here's my thesis why I could be wrong. Here's my here's here's my thesis why. That's nasty. I don't think <laughs> I don't think Murray's going to have he had the series of his life. We'll take his life. He had 32 points a game. 32 points a game in that series. He had the series of his life. Okay. But now, but now, now, the Lakers and my guard for the Lakers, I'm trying to D'Angelo, be, D'Angelo Russell? It's playing. D'Lo playing. D'Lo playing. If D'Lo can hit his average, D- yep. D'Lo averaged four points a game in that last series. Mm-hmm. If he can hit his average, it makes it the closest game, a closer, a closer series. Yeah. Braun going to do his thing. I'm AD, crazy. AD is going to show up get one, one or two games. It make it, if, it, the X factor is D Lo. Okay. Because I don't think Murray's going to do his thing. I don't think Murray's going to have a series of his life like that again. Okay. The thing about D Lo, the reason why he didn't play a lot in the Western Conference Finals is because he had to play defense. Yeah. And Murray's going to keep him. That's going to be the main thing. He's going to have to play defense. They'll put him on Christian Brown. <laughs> Long as I'm telling you, long as D'Lo scores, they're in the they're gonna be in the series. They and and to be fair to the Lakers, they were in every game of the four game, even though it was a sweep. They were in all of those games, and Anthony Davis played well. But you know who let him down? Who? D'Lo. Hey, okay, all right. So I see what you're saying. Um, I love the way the Lakers are playing right now. Um, they LeBron is playing like you know he's turning back the clock. He's been averaging 28 points a game since the All Star break. He knew the severity of where his team was. He had to get him in the, in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So, but with all that being said, it's Yoke Dog. Yoke. Fighting Yoke Dogs, winning five. And them 361 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. They Nikes, though. They not, no. He, he's been, yeah, he was at Nike last year. Yeah, no, nah, he done. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Yoke Dog. Um, <laughs> LeBron James is healthier than he was when they played last year. That's a good thing. Yep. So, like Jeff mentioned, the Lakers are playing at a high level. They won 12 of the last 15 games, 24 of their previous 34, if you're doing some quick math. And after an up-and-down regular season, they've grown into a good team. Also, like Jeff mentioned, they can pretty much hang with any team. They're getting healthy. Uh, They have Gabe Vincent back. Jerry Vanderbilt could play in this series. So Nuggets are really good, and I think it's one of those things where they're just a little bit more top-heavy than um, the Lakers. So I got the Nuggets winning in six. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the Eastern Conference. It won't be a sweep. It won't be a sweep. Yeah, it it will not be a sweep. I don't think we'll see a sweep in these playoffs. Ah, mm. We're going to talk about one right now. We're going to talk about one right now. We'll put that on the board. We're about to talk about one right now, buddy. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> I'll put that on the board. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's move on to the Eastern Conference. We have the number one seed, Boston Celtics, versus either the number eight seed, Heat or Bulls. Regular season series was 3-0 against the Heat. Now, the odds, the Celtics are favored by either team by minus 400. Winner, how many games and why? Jeff, talk to the people. Celtics in four, whoever they play. Wow. Celtics should run rough shot over the East until the Eastern Conference Finals. And shout out to the Bulls for making a run. So, so my guy, uh, what's the point guard name? Kobe White. Kobe, Kobe White, yeah. the most improved player. Shout out to Bond DeRozan, being a consummate professional. Shout out uh, to my guy, at, uh, Voos, Big Voos in the Big, middle, Paul. Yeah. You know what I mean? They got a, the track has a nice roster. Need Levine back. Need Lonzo back. But they got a solid roster. But Boston just one through five. Yeah. Too talented. Please? Just too much. Boston's going to win the series. I just don't think they'll sweep them. Mm, yeah. I agree. This is the thing. The Heat, who I think is going to beat the Bulls, it don't matter. Nah, I'm telling you, that team right there, <laughs> you want to talk about next man up. Mm-hmm. They put they Haywood it. Highsmith out there, <laughs> Jovich, yep. um, Cody Martin. Yep. It don't matter. Mm. Yeah, man, they just, they, <laughs> man, I think they have enough without Jimmy Butler. Hell, the 76ers only beat them minus Jimmy Butler playing on one leg by yeah. a point. See, Jay, Jay doesn't believe in playoff Jimmy. He think that's a man. He think, yeah. he don't believe his eyes on that one. Anyway. I think um, they should have enough to get past the Bulls, which in turn, um, there's not going to be a, a long series against anybody if the Boston Celtics play the way they want to because my only worry is they come in and kind of mope around and lose a game on the road, maybe lose a home game, not playing at a high level. But you can't do that with the Heat because 
you play with them like that, you'll be in a seven game series. Jimmy comes back, boom. Now you're in trouble. Now you're in trouble. <laughs> now the lights are different. So um, they'll beat you with backups, but I really think Celtics should win this in five, whoever they play. Five yeah. and four. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the next matchup is the number four seed Cleveland Cavaliers versus number five seed Orlando Magic. The regular season series split 2 2. Odds Cleveland are favored minus 195. Wheezy, winner, how many games? Why? Cleveland in six. Mm. Cleveland in six. Uh, I, I mean, it's going to be closer, closer series than what, than what people think, but this is the one time I'm actually depending on the guards from Cleveland okay. from the experience. Okay. Orlando, Orlando has a great young team, Jay. You and I both mm-hmm. said they were going to be here um, at the beginning of the season. They proved us right. Shout out to P5, having a great season. But the NBA, more than any other professional league, you got to go through levels. Yeah. And this is Orlando, as as, a, as this unit, as it's been um, uh, assembled, this is their first time in playoffs. They, they're they going to lose this one, and yeah. they're going to lose it in six. This is the thing. The Cleveland Cavaliers had a chance to lock up a two-seed. In the final game of the NBA's regular season, for them to fall to a four against a team that's ahead of schedule, like Jeff mentioned, the Orlando Magic, worry, man. Donovan Mitchell healthy enough? Can the Cavs win a series if he doesn't play at an All NBA level like he had been playing? Darius Garland, can he live up to the potential of him being an All Star, a pseudo number one, and also that front court, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, will they be exposed against? Um, you know, that formidable young starting five. Mm-hmm, man. You're right about that. It's, what's away from the Cleveland Cavaliers are the bright lights, right? They've been battle-tested over the last two years, and um, I think it's time for them to make that change. If they don't, blowing the whole damn team up. So the Cavs in six, but it could get tricky. This the this the NBA NBA TV NBA Network uh, man what uh, yeah. series right here everywhere. all their games gonna be on the yeah. NBA TV what the hell? <laughs> yeah but you're right I can't but they did lose that game in Charlotte the yeah, last game yeah. they could have been in the second so you're right that's tough it's weird yeah it's weird about that moving on to the next matchups number three seed Milwaukee Bucks versus number six seed Indiana Pacers the regular season series Pacers four one mm. odds. Bucks favorite minus one fifty four to win the series. Jeff, winner, how many games? Why? Man, Giannis. The thing is, Giannis can't. He cannot rush back. He can't. He cannot rush back because because if he do, I'm not gonna say what may happen, but just say I need Giannis to take his time. <laughs> that that. No, he cannot. This is gonna go a grueling six to seven game series, depending on Giannis. Dame gives them two games. Giannis got to give them that third or fourth game. Give me the Bucks in seven. Ooh, Weezy. Well, see if you listen to the odds makers, they're telling you that this is going to be a really, really close series. Mm-hmm. It can go either way. Cause you said they're only minus. They only favored by one. Minus one fifty four. Minus by one fifty four. So if you bet a hundred, you only lose one hundred and fifty four dollars. Mm-hmm. You go back to the series, you lose one hundred. You lose four hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So it's gonna be a close series. Yeah, uh, I'm going with the Pacers. The Pacers get hot. Halliburton get hot. Yeah, they going Yeah, they don't. Giannis is. I mean, the deep. The playoffs are made off defense. Yeah, we, we know their def, their best defensive player is not there. Bucks can't play defense. So yeah. Yeah, I'm going with the Pacers in this. If Giannis Antetokounmpo were healthy, I would say Bucks in five. That's how much he means to that team, especially in the playoffs. It was if he would be and if. They were to say, hey, Giannis is going to play later in the series, game two, game three. Yeah. They haven't said that yet. They don't really know. And like Jeff mentioned, you can't rush that injury at all. So, mm, man, if they were facing, no disrespect, Cleveland or Orlando or somebody like that, they were a two seed maybe playing, you know, Miami, Miami or Chicago's something. Gone. Yeah, like it would be a different. But this Pacers team – and they play well against good teams all season, dog. They had the second best record against the top eight teams in the East. So yeah. they play well in big games. They have a potent offense and improved defense. And they got two guys that can go get a bucket. I got the Pacers in six. I'm not mad at it. I got the Pacers in I'm six. Mad. No Giannis means a lot. That means a lot. Means That's a lot. lot. And the last matchup in the Eastern Conference, we have the number two seed, New York Knicks, versus number seven seed, Philadelphia 76ers. The regular season series was three to one, New York Knicks. Odds, 76ers, minus 130. Favorite. Yes, Winner, how many games? Why, Weezy? 
Oof. This is a tough one. This is this is tough. This is a tough one because it tougher than it is, than it is. no, it's not. Well, go ahead, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. Dude. These two these teams are two set yeah, two separate trajectories. Yeah. One team is a, is a number two seed, but they're hurt. Mm-hmm. One of their main keys is hurt. One team is a seven seed, and their best player is back. Philadelphia in six. Mm-hmm. This, this is a, they got one team got Embiid, nah. the other one don't. Nah, I see. One that. team has Embiid, the other one don't. Yeah, but I'm telling you, yeah, Jalen Embiid's been a work dad. Pause. But Jalen, no, did it. Jalen Bronson. Yeah. Just, but yeah. Bronson just is, he, he can do the same thing. He can do the same thing MB can do. He can score right with MB. Uh-huh. They can't guard either one of them. They can't guard even one of them. Yeah. Nah. What you got? I I got Knicks. Knicks and seven. Can't wait to see the goal. This reminds me That's of cool. this reminds me of remember when Cleveland played Washington. Yeah, or Cleveland played even when Cleveland. Texas. No, no. When Cleveland played the Golden State in the championship. Okay. okay. It reminds me of that because Kyrie knew that Steph couldn't guard him. Steph yeah. knew that Kyrie couldn't guard him. It's two different positions with Jalen Bronson and what's called, but if if MB go score a bucket, Jalen Bronson, I gotta score a bucket. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. I see what you're saying. So as much stars run this league, we know second, third, and fourth options are gonna swing this series. And their second, third, and fourth option in New York. OG Ananobi, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo. Solid. I tell you why Dante's got a bag. Dante, man. He's got a bag. Man, I think. They just played White Dante? Yeah, they played well. They, they, yeah, they got extended them. Yeah, 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 they extended them. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. You got MB and you got Max. Now you have Nicholas Batum, who's found the fountain of you. Found the fountain of you. Then you also have Kelly Oubre. Kelly Oubre. Then this is the X Factor nobody's talking about. Buddy Hill. Buddy Hill. Buddy Hill's on that team. They made that trade for Buddy Hill yeah. in the middle of the trade deadline. Yeah. And it made sense. To play with MB. Joel and B. Exactly. Yeah. But the biggest X factor of this series is OG Ananobi. If he can slide and guard, you know, mm. the wings, listen, man, mm. this won't be an easy series for either team. This is going to be a knockdown, oh. drag out. This is my most anticipated series of the first round. I think the Knicks have been able to compete with anybody, even without Julius Randle. I got the Knicks winning in seven. It's going to be fun, though. Who, who has the better coach in this series? Give me the Knicks. I got the 76ers as a better coach. Yeah, Nick Nurse? Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse is a way better coach. Nah, Tibbs. Tibbs, Tibbs bring it out of you. Nah, Tibbs oh, overcoach. Tibbs, yeah, he bring it out that of you. Yeah, <laughs> but, 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 but that's, that, that's a bonus in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You got to coach. The boys went through a wall for Tibbs. But Nick Nurse has been there to. too. <laughs> Nick Nurse has been there too. Yeah, Nick Nurse got a championship. He's been there too. I don't think about Tibbs, man. Every time he gets a playoffs, he, one of his players is hurt. Every yeah. single time. Because he overplays them. It happens all the time. Crazy. All right. That was our first round predictions for the NBA. You guys ready to get started with halftime? Let's do it. Let's get it. Make sure you check us out on iTunes, Facebook, Instagram, Google Play, Spotify, Beyond Pie, YouTube, Amazon Music, and Amazon Music. Hey, if you got Amazon Prime, <laughs> hell yes, that too. <laughs> Make sure you do all that, all right? <laughs> and when these ads start I'm showing, ads are free if you got Amazon Prime or Amazon Music. Make sure you check that out. All right, to get some of the full archive of past episodes of FSP, just simply search for Sports Press Podcast. Halftime. Yep. It is the FSP. No, nah, we're not doing that this week. No. Nah. We're not doing that this week. <laughs> Kevin, man, you know, seasons are changing outside. It is. It's starting to get a little warmer. You know, you know what that means? Time to do some spring cleaning. That's it. Inventory check. Inventory check. I like that, We A little bit of inventory check. So when you hear this, when you see this, the good guys over here at the Full Sport Press Podcast, we're doing a little spring cleaning. Mm-hmm. You know, I always say, get your tees, get your hats, get your shirts, get your merch. Get your tees, get your hats, get your shirts, get your merch. Yeah. Well, now is the perfect time to do so. Yeah. Got your hats. That's James holding the lovely full sport yeah. press. Snap back. We got hoodies. We got hoodies. Uh, we got hoodies. Got hoodies. On there. All that. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. We got t-shirts. Oh, we got that here. Definitely got t-shirts. <laughs> Everything will be marked down on fullsportpresspodcast.com. Again, full sport. PressPodcast.com. Please get your tees, get your hats, get your shirts, get your merch. You won't find them again at this price. No. So if you were on the fence about it, if you were thinking about it, get one for you. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Pull the trigger. Pull, please pull the trigger in a positive way. Yeah. That's right. This week. Yep. And this week only. How at us. Yes, sir. Ready for the second half? Let's get it. Let's do it. Smart press. Smart. 
J Ho. Check us out each and every Monday. The Revolution will be podcasted. Revolution will be podcasted. Second half of the 2024 NFL mock draft. I am Jay Ho. It's your boy Big Jeff. It's your boy Weezy. What it do? Cameraman, we're less than one week away from the start of the 2024 NFL draft, which happens April 25th through the 27th in Jeff's city, Detroit. Hey, now. Shout out to the D. What up, though? It's so cold in the D. Man. But I'm telling you what, BMF is ruined in Detroit. Bro. That, man, that's bad. That's a bro, dang why, why so much bad TV? Here we go. I don't watch a lot of TV, man. You watch BMF? I, I, no, I'm out of there. Right? When, I, when, I, when, I, when I saw the flamethrower, I'm done. You was done. I was done. You got out of there? I got out of there. The flamethrower did it for me. Bad. You got to let me know. what. If I, if I got a reason to go back, I go back. Hey, but, be real. You uh, ain't miss nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hot. I'm that locked fl- in. That flamethrower hurt. Telling you, that hurt me. Man, if this season ends, man, bro, they had a cardiologist deliver a baby. See what I'm saying? That was all the same episode. Bro, come on. Yeah, that's bro. tough. That's, that's tough. Anyway, nah. Y'all just ruined it for me. Bro, you don't even have. You know, first off, you ain't got cable. Oh, oh, wow. You ain't got cable. You watch BMF? I know you watch BMF, Weeks. I know. Oh, yeah. Bro, he, his TV goes on one channel. ESPN. ESPN. Yeah. Why you sound like that? I ain't got no cable. You got good cable. You got, you got really good cable. Yeah. I'm just saying. You still got, we still got cable cable. You ain't even streaming. You got real good cable. He's remote. <laughs> yeah. ESPN. That's the only thing you know how to get to. What channel is ESPN? 11? ESPN is still 11. ESPN is still 11. Yeah. I, they switched to the HD version of it. But yeah, it's 4K to now. Mm. Woo. Talk to him. Yeah, that better be. Yeah. <laughs> so as we do every year, this exercise is meant to provide a general idea of when a player might be picked over the course of the first round. So you can kind of get a sense of where your team might find value at a position of need. But in the end, it's really about thinking outside the box about what could happen and not just what everybody expects, as we see within every draft for the last 10 years. What we do here at FSP, we go 16 to 1. Mm-hmm. Anticlimactic at the beginning. Anticlimactic. Yeah, for sure. Boy's here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So we will start things off with the 16th pick of the 2024 NFL draft. The Seattle Seahawks are on the clock. Jeff, what you got? Wait, do you, do you let the listeners know we are doing this as if no one is making any trades? So this is thousand percent. Yeah, make sure they know that a thousand percent. Yeah, we want to hear that. Yeah, no, trades. yeah, no trades unless the trade has already happened. Yeah, we're going with it how it is currently. Yeah, in tow. So All again, right. so if you got a problem with it, let's see your mock draft. Let's see it. Now, yeah. now, now there we go. Yeah. That's what. That's my type of energy. Yeah. On the clock, number sixteen, the Seattle Seahawks. Jeff, who's the pick and why? I still got one football team, Cameron Man, and that's the Florida State Seminoles. I got young Jerry Verse going here to Seattle. They need a good edge rusher. Now, barring trades, I can see Jerry still being available here at 16, and this is going to be a great pickup for the Seattle Seahawks. I ain't mad at that. What you got, Weezy? All right, Jeff, I got your guy going right here, your quarterback. Mm. From Washington. Ooh. Michael Penix. Michael Penix right here. 16? At 16. I think he's. I think. You bet that? No. That's a, that's a, that's not mad at that. No, I, that. I I don't think they I don't think they are fully trust in Gino. Mm-hmm. They gave Gino they gave Gino his money. He but I think Michael Penix goes here. <laughs> Gino got blitzed by Aaron Donald. He said, "Oh shit!" Through the bottom. Yeah. You that? <laughs> that's, that's fun. My pick is Byron Murphy, D tackle from Texas Seahawks for thirtieth in rushing EPA last year, thirty first in passing yards allowed which is the reason why they hired Mike McDonald. His history with the Ravens scheme suggests that you play a huge D tackle. Calais Campbell was there. Justin Matabuke was there. And um, the guy Byron Murphy comps really well with both of those guys. So for fr- if you follow the free agency dollars, DTs are uh, going pretty high. Yeah. In fact, the top 11 defensive tackles, the most high paid cornerbacks. Mm. right now so you gotta look at it d-tackle is so if you're having kids right now let's push them towards d-tackle yeah for sure because that's where the money's at so byron murphy d-tackle going to the seahawks i like it number 15 the indianapolis colts are on the clock wheezy who's your pick and why i got corner right here from alabama cool turning on on right there who 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 who's that corner 
And the Colts, they got Kenny Moore. Yeah. yeah. Kenny Moore cold. Sorry. Kenny Moore is all right. He never he, Kenny Moore. He, Kenny Moore ain't never made our, our top seven list ever. Yeah, he should, but he's because he plays slot. I'm trying Kenny Kenny Moore. He plays slot. He's the best. He plays but, slot, or he's the best slot corner in the league. Uh, what? Well, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with it. But hey, everybody get old. Everybody get old. What you got? We, I mean, Jeff. I'm going corner as well. But I'm going Quinn Mitchell from Toledo. Mm. They need some help at the corner. Mm. Kenny Moore side. This is gonna be a good pickup for them. Yeah. All right. Um, I have my guy Cooper Dijon going here from I. We all got quarters. Yeah. <laughs> Secondary is young man, yeah. but I think what they'll do, uh, the showing a guy that is a little bit more versatile. He can play safety. He can also play mm-hmm. corner as well. No, if yeah, be safe. <laughs> <laughs> they just need one more player, and I think this kid is the player. Outstanding college career, super Swiss Army knife. It's fifteen too rich for sure, but his elite athleticism, the way he looked. On his pro day, I will think I'm a little bit more optimistic about how high he'll go in this draft. So, um, Indianapolis Colts, 15. He's going to be a really good player. Cooper DeJong will be a really good player in the league, though. Yeah, yeah. No matter where you, he'll be good. position you're at. Yeah. Moving on to the number 14 pick in the draft. The New Orleans Saints are on the clock. Jeff, who's your pick and why? Uh, Talese Fuega, mm-hmm. Oregon State, offensive tackle. Ramsey, they left tackle right now, having knee, knee issues. So they need some help bulking up that line, and you can have you can, you can replace him at left tackle with Fuega, or move Fuega to the uh, inside with the guards, or right around the center. Well, definitely a left or right guard. This is a great pickup for them. Reese, I think they're gonna go best available here. I think they go Jerry Verse right here. Hmm. Big Jerry Verse. Jerry Verse. Jerry Verse falling a little further than what you guys got, man. Uh, me and Jeff have the same guy. <laughs> I have Tally East Fuega going right here. The Saints have 99 problems, and I think O-line is at least a couple of them, maybe 30, 40 of those, because, you know, Trevor Pennick never really curled. It's Luther Curl. Never really. Okay. It just never really. You know, so in turn with Wagner, he can play left tackle. He can play a little bit of guard as well. So I um, think he has a mean streak to him, motor that doesn't quit, and you need that if you have so many problems, so many holes to fill. I think Wagner is a great uh, get for the New Orleans Saints at 14. Moving on to 13, the Las Vegas Raiders are on the clock. Weezy, who's your pick and why? They need a quarterback bad. Probably going to try to trade and get up one. But, then I, I mean, we ain't talking about trades. I got J.J. McCarthy going here. J.J. McCarthy. Okay. There's no way he falls that late. Really? He should. He should. He should. Yeah. Cock-cock. He's just a little longer than this, but he yeah. is. It's- the other, the other three is a whole lot better than he is. Yeah, they he, are. He, he no good he, he, nothing you said is wrong. Now, he you just said one thing. <laughs> you said one thing wrong. <laughs> but that's something. Yeah. We'll get to it. What you got, Jeff? I got Romo Duns going here for okay. Washington. Man, he ain't following that low at all. Yeah. So, I, it's a method to my madness okay. because we are not trading. This okay. is They're taking the best available player. Okay. And I'm with you. You're right. Mm-hmm. He should not fall. But if that the selection stay the same, there's a world where he's available right here. Okay. I have uh, the Raiders going cornerback, Quinion Mitchell, cornerback from Toledo, super hyper-athletic corner, knack of generating big plays, just like one of those guys that Al Davis would draft. Oh, yeah. Coverage credentials. I think he's a top 10 corner, top 10 pick at the corner position. I just think his addition would serve to a nice, just a piece that they need at the cornerback position. And they've struck out – Numerous times at cornerback over the years in uh, with the Raiders. So, yep, I just think you get Antonio Pierce, you need a guy out there. They Quinion Mitchell's a guy at corner from Toledo. Number 12, the Denver Broncos are on the clock. Jeff, who's the pick and why? They need a lot. They, they do. They definitely need a quarterback. They're going to talk themselves in the Bo Nix right here. Mm. Yep. They're going to talk themselves in the draft in the Bo Nix right mm-hmm. here. And we all are going to be like, what in the world is going on? But this is where Bo Nix gets drafted. Weezy? We got Brock Bowers going right here. Georgia. Yeah. Okay. You think y'all let him get past seven if he falls that low? We got a plan. Y'all got a plan? Okay. Right. Yeah. We got a plan. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm rolling with Jeff, man. I got Bo Nix going <laughs> right here. Broncos are back on the quarterback carousel again. Yeah. Well, of course, they would love to get up a little higher and get one of the guys that will be mentioned in the top four. Yeah. They just don't have enough ammunition, Jeff. And with the second round selection missing there, you got to get a guy there. Mm-hmm. I think they stay in, scoops up Knicks, and 
and just have him as a guy that can be out there for the future to call some of the games. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't excited about it, but Mm-mm. here we are. Mm-mm. Moving on to the number 11 pick, we have the Minnesota Vikings on the clock. Weezy, who's your pick and why? They need a lot. Everything. <laughs> Other than <laughs> Justin Jefferson. They need everything. <laughs> they got so many picks. They got a couple picks. I got I got one of the picks. They got I got them getting the uh offensive lineman Funga from uh the Oregon. Okay. Yeah. What's his first name? Talisa. 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 Fuaga. Fuaga. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great offensive lineman, man. Yeah. What you got, Joe? Here's where my dog go. Young purple. He gets to keep his purple do rag. Captain okay. Man. Michael Phoenix Jr. goes right here. They need a quarterback. They they talk themselves into a quarterback at eleven. And they get the best one out of the bunch. Second best out of the bunch. Yeah. Second best out of the bunch. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, this is where I have Terion Arnold, cornerback from Alabama, going. Vikings, they're gonna stay put, get a top corner, great all around prospect. He arrived again, like we talked about in our comp show. He was a safety. Then played inside and outside corner under Nick Saban, flourished in the Alabama defense, just has the juice. Sam Darnold will be the Vikings' day one QB, but that doesn't mean Minnesota's done in the quarterback room. I just think that they'll address this with Terry on Arnold, getting the best available. I like it. Starting with the top ten, we have the New York Jets on the clock. Jeff, who's the pick and why? They're going Brock Bowers here. Mm-hmm. He's still available. Get yet another weapon for what's left to Aaron Rodgers and your quarterback <laughs> of the future after him. Yeah, that's going to be available. That's how we pick a ten if they can get him. They can get, they, they, he'll be available at ten if the draft if no one makes moves. We got to remember that. To me, he's available at ten and he goes to the Jets. We, I got Brock Bowers already gone. Mm. But if he, if he, I got a Dunze. Wrong. Wrong with Dunze. Yeah. Wide receiver. Yeah. They're gonna go offense. Okay. Yeah. It's either going to be a wide receiver or, or Brock Bowers. So it's a threat. It's yeah. a weapon. Yep. Um, I have Brock Bowers going here as well. Okay. Right. The Jets' top needs are an offensive line help or a wide receiver, tight end one. Like, so should be a talented prospects to choose from there. I think Rome will be gone. So you kind of settle for Brock Bowers. The Jets feel as if um team to roll the dice on a good tight end. Thing that scares me. Hasn't been one tight end drafted in the first round to sign the second contract with the team that drafted him. <laughs> so here's looking at you, Kyle Pitts. Oh, I think he'll yeah. break that mold. Um, but I think he's more Dalton Kincaid than Kyle Pitts. And I think it's a decision to skip athletic testing to do just that. I think he did that on, for, you know, I think we know how good of a player he is. Yes. If he walks into the Georgia team as a walk on any other way, if not, it wasn't off athletic testing. He was supposed to even redshirt his freshman year. Yeah. Came up getting a thousand. Yeah, won the damn Belichick as a tight end as a freshman. So, um, yeah, Brock Bowers, the tenth pick. Moving on to number nine, we have the Chicago Bears on the clock. Weezy, who's your pick and why? I have the defensive end from Alabama, Dallas Turner, right here. Okay, ain't bad. Dallas bad. Turner, good edge, good edge guy. You got Jeff, they're, you Jeff. they're definitely going defense in this with the second pick. And I go out Byron Murphy right here. DT from yeah. Texas going right. You got him going top team. Yeah, I'm going top he team. good though. He going top he team. that good. Yeah. He like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have them going offensive line right here. I have Olu Fashanu, left mm-hmm. tackle from Penn State going here. They only have, you know, four draft picks this year. So you gotta make every trade work. And Fashanu, I think he has the highest upside of all the tackle prospects. Byron Jones. Excuse me, Braxton Jones um, was a clutch find in the fifth round in 2022. I think it's one of those reasons where you can move him around. He can move around a little bit more. But finally, the main reason I have them drafted for Shanu, guess who was his left tackle in high school? Guess who the quarterback was? Oh, Caleb. Caleb Williams Caleb. was his left tackle yeah. in high school at DeMath or Gonzaga High School. Make it work. Got to go get his guy. That makes sense. Olu Fashano, left tackle. That says a lot right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure. That's good potting right there. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah, how you do it, Yeah, man. for sure. <laughs> that's how you do it. Coming in at number eight, we have the Atlanta Falcons on the clock. Jeff, who's the pick and why? Dallas Turner. Got to get some – Got got you got about enough weapons on offense. Mm-hmm. You got much as you can handle on offense, to me. 
Now it's time to go get you some, some more players on that defense and really solidify that, that front that front line mm-hmm. and get that a turn on that edge. You got a you got a got a problem right there. Yeah. Weezy. I got your boy going right here. Cooper Dijon. Cooper Dijon going eight. Gee, gee, sh- <laughs> like, that's how good he looked though in that in that damn pro day. It's either him or Quentin Mitchell. Yeah. One of the two. He looked good. He looked good. And here is my reach of the entire draft. I have JJ McCarthy, quarterback from Michigan, going right here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Be a fantastic fit for the Fabs because the ability to throw up in the middle. Learn from the great Kirk Cousins. This is what they do, man. Brock Purdy 2.0. They can develop <laughs> under a guy that can develop quarterbacks. Brock Purdy 2.0. It's crazy. J.J. McCarthy, 8. And next up, the number 7 spot. Mm-hmm. We have the Tennessee Titans. Is you a Tennessee Titan? <laughs> On the clock, Wheezy. Who is the pick and why? Don't overthink it, bro. Nah, I. I think Joe Oscar be gone. The pick before us. Wow, wow. I think that uh, we gotta go Malik Naples right here. Ooh, we'll go. Gonna be crazy. <laughs> I think we go Malik Naples right here. Cause if Joe Alt is gone, that's what we need. That's what we want. Mm-hmm. I promise you, we want Joe Alt. Mm-hmm. But if he, if somehow Harbaugh talks his way into getting Joe Alt because he likes, he likes to build from the front up. So if he gets his, if he gets, if he gets Joe Alt, we going best available. And that could be Malik Naples. That could be Brock Bowers. That could be anybody. Yeah. We're going offense. If Joe Alt's not there, we're going offense. You got Chiggs. Do you think y'all need Brock Bowers? Yeah, he, I think he's a little bit better than Brock than Chiggs. Okay. Too tight in, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and this, this is, if everything falls correctly, this is the second easiest pick of the draft. Mm-hmm. Joe Alt is the guy. Yeah. Like, this is too easy for the Titans. Yeah. Tight. yeah. Because you got your outfits, you got your running back, you got your receivers, you got your quarterback of the future. Yeah, so you think the last two, the last thing this team has needed every year for the past three years is more offensive line help. Yeah. And here you go, help is on the way. I got Joe out going here as well. After releasing Andre Dillard, current star left tackle is Weezy's guy Nicholas Petit Freire. So he has sixty-two career snaps at the spot. You don't go get Brian Callahan, then bring in one of the best offensive line coaches, his dad, Bill Callahan, and you don't get the old lineman, I think, who's the best guy in the draft. Joe Alt goes here, coached up by Bill Callahan, left tackle, staple, best left tackle you guys have had since the great Taylor Lewan. Oh, Alt. God. Taylor Lewan was great. It's Fred Miller. Fred Miller, Bruce Matthews. I said since <laughs> the great Taylor Lewan. Taylor Lewan. Well, I'm just saying, what if he's not there? He won't. He'll be there. Because we have the number six pick up now. The New York Giants are on the clock. Jeff, who's the pick and why? It shouldn't be, but they're going to talk themselves into it. The New York Giants are selecting J.J. McCarthy. Oh, my God. Not at six, Jeff. Yes, they are. J.J. McCarthy is going way too high in his draft. Yeah, I agree. I'm telling you that. I agree with that. He's going higher than he should be. I agree And the Giants are going to look up and say, what the hell? Might as well try. Yeah, it's good. That's what the fact. I guess why I got the Falcons going. <laughs> yeah. Weez? I think I think they're gonna do something stupid right here. Uh oh. They're gonna do something stupid. Uh-oh. I I think they're gonna go Bo Nix right here. Oh my god. They get one of them, Jay. One of them one of those quarterbacks are going right here. Bro, these guys don't have a wide receiver. They don't. Rome Odunze is going right here from the University of Washington. I would have picked him, but I already had him gone. Yeah, the GM said recently they're going to add a quarterback this offseason via free agency or the draft. I get what you guys are saying. That makes sense. J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix might be there. But the front office and coaches, they have red hot seats. If they can't compete in 2024, you need a long-term X receiver. That is Rome Odunze. You need the size, vertical stretch. Guy, you have Jalen Hyatt there. You need Rome Odunze. This is one of those picks that should be easy. You can find a guy. You can get a free agent guy. You can, you you about to pay Danny Dimes forty million bucks. They can't do that no more. They they got, they got to gut this team, bro. That's why you got started over quarterback. I think Rome Odunze could potentially unlock. Uh-uh. Danny Dimes. He hadn't had a wide receiver. You know who his best wide receiver he's had? Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard. Kadir is the, the ghost KT of Kadir. 
They had the the guy was the dude that played for Detroit. He gave him all that money. Bad free agency signing. Never played. Williams. Not last name Williams, but Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay. That's a bad pick. Bad. A they gave that man like sixty million yeah. guaranteed. He didn't play sixty games. Come on, man. He hasn't had a receiver. Yeah. But yeah, no, nah, I'm good. Moving on to the next pick, the number five spot, the Los Angeles Chargers are on the clock. Wheezy, who's the pick and why? They got their quarterback. They need the offensive line. I think Joe Alt goes right here. Ooh. Slater and Joe Alt. Mm. Mm. You don't need Alt. You got Trey Pipkins right there. Mm -mm. One of the offensive linemen is old and he, and he come off an injury. Mm -mm. They got Pipkins. They, they ain't going to. Mm. What you got? They're going to look up and realize, wait. We don't have a wide receiver. Come on, man. <laughs> Duh. Malik Davis goes right yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, and I get that what Weezy's saying. Jim Harbaugh would love to build a wall around Justin Herbert. I get mm -hmm. that. He's done it every step of his way throughout his career. But they have eight other picks to find competition at center and right tackle. This is the best offensive line draft we've seen in yes, years. Man. So I'm going with the higher graded prospect. I'm going with Malik Neighbors. Yeah. You put him next to Josh Palmer, Quentin Johnson. Yeah. Hey, man, you don't need all. You need a guy. And Malik Neighbors is the guy. Let's go. That's good for you, Ease. I'm telling you. He just, I, he doing a reverse thing. Yeah. Reverse, reverse. He won't Joe out. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Number four is the Arizona Cardinals are on the clock. Weezy, who is the pick and why? This should be unanimous. Hmm. It's, it's just, it's, it's your boy from Ohio State, the wide Ooh. receiver, What's Wilma that? Harris, Junior. Yeah, Junior. Yeah, it should be. That should be. You think so? Yeah. You 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 show a calamari. You believe in him. You want to stick with him. You don't. You got to take your. You got to take a weapon for him. You let mm -hmm. Hopkins go while he was hurt. Um, you let uh Rondell Moore Rondell go. Moore go. You let Hollywood Brown go. Yep. Like you got to go get your guy though. This mm -hmm. is your young guy with your still young QB, and you still have a decent run game. Yeah, you can still make that work. Okay. I mean, they already have two ones. An early second round pick, yeah. three threes. You could turn that team around this year. And five day three picks. You so. could turn that team around this year if you do this right. They don't need more picks to trade out of this spot. Mm -mm. They need more blue chip talent, yeah. and there's not a better blue chip talent in this draft than Marvin Harrison, especially if he falls to four. Because yeah. that current depth chart is the best wide receiver on their team is Michael Wilson, dog. Yeah, they got to do something. Yeah, nah, they are going Marvin Harrison Jr. right here. Nuts. The number three spot. The New England Patriots are on the clock. Jeff, who's the pick and why? You signed Jacoby Brissett recently. You signed, you hired Jared Mayo as your coach. Let's just go full red, black, and green. Jaden Daniels is going to be your starting quarterback for the New England Patriots. Wow. Okay. Weezy, what you got? Second, I got Third. Drake. I got Drake May going here. I got Drake May going here. Not because they want it, but because other quarterbacks. He's the one. He's the one to be left. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, I got Drake May going right here as well. Mechanical issues, chaotic plays. That is Drake May. <laughs> but I think he's worth the risk in the New England Patriots' eyes, especially if he had Jacoby Brissett steering the ship day one. So. Highly graded by most analysts. Most insiders don't believe New England is outwardly looking to trade down. So just rare for a QB needed team to pass on an actual QB prospect this high. Mm -hmm. um, Jaden Daniels won't be there, so you got to go Drake May. Okay. Number two pick, the Washington football team is on the clock. Wheezy, who is your pick and why? I got Jaden Daniels going here, man. Mm. At number two, um, they just need it. They need a they need a quarterback. He, he kind of has the weapons. He got he got a receiver over there for sure. Mm -hmm. They can protect him. He, I think he's. They just got to get Jaden Daniels. I think this is the Drake May pick. Mm -hmm. I think Washington is 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 throwing uh, false signals out there. The, um, we, you know, Jaden Daniels has, has looked great. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think this is the pick for Drake May to be the face of their franchise. You got you got scary Terry, you got your run game, you got rid of a lot of that defense, but you still got some defense over there. You can build on that as your later picks. But Drake May, 
what comes to face of that franchise with new ownership too. As I think about it, I think Drake May will go here as well. I want to switch mine to Drake May and then Jaden Daniels will go three because yeah. I get why some people believe in be Drake May. Yeah, I mean, it can go either way. Yeah. But I just think it's just the way that Drake May mm -hmm. goes. Mm -hmm. And then they got basketball guys, which mm -hmm. are analytic guys, making this pick. Mm -hmm. I think that they're going to go with Drake May because his – Analytics look better than Jaden Daniels on paper. Jaden Daniels had the stuff yeah. you can't coach. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm rolling. I got Drake May going two, then Jaden Daniels going three. Yeah, yeah. I might regret that, but here we are. And number one, it's okay, but you know I get the most picks right every year. Yeah, 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 no, you don't. It's that's cap. It is the Chicago Bears on the clock. I think it's only one guy left. Yeah. yeah. And it is Caleb Williams, quarterback from USC. Yeah. Would that be unanimous? Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah. Nah, I think Chicago dropped the ball. They had a chance to do something. They could have shook this up really a lot, and they could have got a haul for that pick. One of those teams, one of these teams that were desperate for a quarterback would have gave them two to four first-round picks for this pick. Yeah. And their pick this year. You know what I'm saying? And you could have got a lot for that. Go ahead, Wiz. I think they, I think they so desperate though to win soon mm -hmm. that they couldn't risk to trade this pick. They, yeah, I agree with that. They couldn't risk it. I, I, I think back in my mind that they'd be like, man, we could trade this pick and we'll be all right with Justin Fields. Yeah. To the fans, but the the who's who in the NFL to talk about Caleb Williams, they couldn't risk that trade. When I saw them keep Matt Eberflus, who just threw. Um, Jay Fields smooth under the bus the entire year. Mm -hmm. Bad play calling. Um, I knew then when they kept him that they were looking into going another way and getting mm -hmm. a guy. And then you know it was rumors because Cliff Kingsbury went to Washington. He wants to play in D.C. at the crib. People don't want to go home, man. People don't want to pay for all those tickets back at the crib. So you know Cliff Kingsbury probably would like a Drake May just as much as he would probably like a Caleb Williams type of player. So, um, yeah, man, I think it'll work for him. I didn't know he was that short, um, <laughs> six feet, six one. That don't matter no more. Though. You damn lie. It's how Bryce extend, Young. How they extending those pockets nowadays? Man, listen. They moving them around. Man, the way Bryce Young be looking out there, he might be done. I wouldn't want to compare my quarterback to Bryce Young, though. That's a that's a that poor that poor fella's in a bad spot, terrible spot. <laughs> He's Absolutely a, terrible. Yeah. I'm telling you what. We trade Brandon Ayuk in this draft. We're going to get a top 10 pick for that. I'm telling you. Philadelphia Eagles make a trade. Philadelphia's moving up. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they know how to draft. win and deal. I'm telling you. Some, uh, some, fr some franchises just know how to do this. Yeah. Others don't. Oh, shit. Yeah. Others, but others just But don't. I'm excited about day one yeah. of the draft. Party of Wheezy's. Ow. Hmm. Ow. <laughs> School night. Ah, uh, 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 what what dog say? No, <laughs> tweet us some questions throughout the week at Full Sport Press. Don't forget to comment, give us a thumbs up on the YouTube got. page. That's right. Stop, stop the press, <laughs> Weezy. Uh, you have an idea? We will kick it to you. What's up? Oh well, this job, we always pick our guys. And mm -hmm. So let's put it on record, cause on wax, cause it sounds it always seems to play it always seems to play out where if a guy's killing, you say, oh, I called him, yeah. I called this pig, we never really heard it. Uh -huh. I got a co-host that's really really good at that, no. really good at that. Oh, uh, Jeff, I got a co-host that's really good at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah Jeff. So uh, let's 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 call you guys. You, for now. you can kick it off. Who you got? You want me to go first? Yeah, kick it right. Uh, my guy is a wide receiver from South Carolina, Xavier. Well, mm -mm. Leggett, yes, he's from South Carolina wide receiver. Oh, yeah, it's because it's another one. Xavier Worthy plays for Texas. Yeah, yeah I got it. Yeah, Leggett. 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 Yeah, Xavier country Leggett. guy. Yeah, yeah. I got him. My guy is Cooper Dijon, cornerback safety, University of Iowa. Okay. We talking about, oh, we talking about like lower guys? Nah, just, no, can, no, no. Ricky Purcell, wide receiver from Florida. Next Cooper Cup. You see, you see how he slid two in there? He just slid two. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Who you got, Joe? I got two. Now got, let them do stuff. I got Jerry Verse, and I got Michael Penix. You talk about me. He got two top twenty picks. Who, who's your logo? Who's not going to the first day? Kool Aid. 
Kool Aid going first round? Depending on who you ask. Maybe. Maybe Kool Aid like going to go first round. Right? Everybody got two. I got Jaden Daniels. I've been calling him Daniels. Yeah, Kool Aid's my low pick, my low round pick. He gonna hurt you. Just like Bryce Young hurt you. I, I would really have on Bryce Young. That is, that is hell no. I said he was gonna be first pick, but I would. I said he was gonna be first pick. I was taking first, but I wouldn't like. He ain't I, got Bryce, I got, I got, I got. Uh, Michael Penny stuff. My thought. I ain't gonna pick Bryce Young up from the airport. God. And the tweet is some questions. So what was I feeling about CJ Stroud? I told you CJ Stroud, my my guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jeff tried to say he's a CJ Stroud fan. That might be the nastiest shit. I no, but Weezy, Weezy, keep it real. Do I not every year on this show talk about Ohio State in the bit in, in their quarterback play every year? I said CJ Stroud was the best. Was they were the best team in college football? Did I not say that? Yeah, I, I think you could probably said that. Yeah. And you asked Weezy to go to the credit union for you. Really reached. He's the only other person in the room that got a microphone. Tweet some questions throughout the week at Full Sport Press. <laughs> Don't forget to comment, give us a thumbs up on the YouTube page, on the iTunes page. Please write and subscribe. But more importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. To tell a friend. And tell a friend. Wheezy. Everything paid for, big baby. Jeff. Camera's always on, brother. Cameraman, the revolution will Jay. be podcasted. <laughs> we are out. Thank you for listening to the Full Sport Press Podcast. To catch up on previous episodes, please check out the YouTube page and wherever you find your favorite podcast. Don't forget, tell a friend to tell a friend. The revolution will be podcasted.